All right, let's jump into our first item for this evening. When Fulton County District Attorney Fannie Willis indicted uh, President Donald Trump on Monday night, she also ensnared 18 other individuals with those charges. Several of them uh, that are accused are political insiders, such as Ru Rudy Giuliani or uh, former chief of staff of the White House, Mark Meadows. But the list also included citizen electors and even a publicist for pop music acts. Uh, but with the former president leading the field in the 2024 Republican presidential nomination, there is a political dimension to every element of this prosecution. Well, what can we make of it? What can we make of the others who are indicted? Well, joining me now to break all of this down for us is Mike Davis. He's the founder of the Article 3 Project. He spent nearly 10 years as a civil litigator in Denver, and he has also served in all three branches of our federal government. Mike, welcome back to the program. Good to have you. Thank, thank you for having me, Congressman. Well, it's our, our privilege in every way. All right, look, before we get into the details, let's look at the big picture. You yourself has called this whole thing a, uh, an election interference. Uh, that's your read, really, on the indictment of former President Trump, correct? There's no question. And this has been the lawfare campaign by the Democrats going back to the Mar-a-Lago raid last August, a year ago, where it started off with this unprecedented, unnecessary, unlawful home raid on President Trump for the non-crime of a former president having his presidential records, which is allowed by the Presidential Records Act. And then uh, you had Alvin Bragg up in New York, the Manhattan DA, Soros-funded Manhattan DA, indicting Trump for the non-crime of a businessman settling a nuisance claim. Jack Smith indicted for Mar-a-Lago. Then Jack Smith and Fannie Willis have both indicted the former president for the non-crime of a presidential candidate objecting to a presidential election, which is allowed by the Electoral Count Act of 1887, twisting arms politically, is allowed by the First Amendment if for a crime to object to presidential elections. Democrats would be in prison for objecting to Republican wins in 1968, 2000. 2004 and 2016. This is Democrat lawfare to take out President Trump. It's the same thing that we've been discussing for the last year. Yeah, I mean, listen, you bring up a great point uh, that we have seen so many Democrats object to elections in the past. No problem whatsoever. Mm -hmm. But you let it happen now, and all of a sudden it's criminal. Well, as you said, it's a non-crime indictment. I mean, you say that over and over. And so, well, that's a powerful a powerful description that we have indictments for non-crimes. But in addition to the president himself uh, in all of this, uh, there are 18 others. Let's start, if we can, Mike, by uh, discussing former chief of staff Mark Meadows. He was, from my understanding, tell me if I'm wrong, was he operating in his capacity as chief of staff? Yeah, I mean, he was setting up meetings for the president and coordinating uh, advisors and coordinating with uh, coordinating with supporters. That's his job as the White House Chief of Staff. And that shows you, Congressman, why this indictment is so fundamentally flawed. Uh, it's flawed in two different ways. Number one, the government officials, whether it's President Trump, his Chief of Staff, Mark Meadows, or Senior Justice Department official, Jeff Clark, these people are acting within their official capacity. So therefore, you can't Bring, a state cannot bring criminal charges against federal officials who are acting in their official capacity, even, even in the outer perimeter of their official capacity. Yeah, there's a Supreme Court case involving Nixon, Nixon versus Fitzgerald, where it held that you cannot sue federal officials uh, for acting. So you cannot sue them personally for acting within their official capacity, even, even on the outer perimeter. If you can't sue them, for acting within their official capacity, how the heck do you think you can imprison them? And it's just, it's not, this is not gonna fly with the Supreme Court. So you're gonna see President Trump, I would presume, along with Mark Meadows and Jeff Clark and other government officials moving to uh, remove this case from uh, this Georgia Fulton County Court and uh, from Fulton County Georgia Court and moving it to the Northern District of Georgia, a, a U.S. District Court. And then I presume that they're going to move to dismiss this indictment, uh, President Trump for presidential immunity and these other uh, government officials, Mark Meadows and Jeff Clark, because they're, they're government officials. You can't 
indict federal government officials for what they're doing in their official capacity. And alternatively, if they're not doing this in their official capacity, this is protected by the First Amendment. Unless you're charging these guys with the riots or inciting a riot or um, threats or violence, anything along those lines, this is this is First Amendment activity. You can speak. You can you can petition government. You can twist arms politically. The political process is ugly. And if we're going to indict politicians and their supporters for being ugly during the political process, I don't know of too many politicians who would not be in prison right now. Very, very good point. In fact, multiple good points you just brought up, Mike. You know, one of the things that, that, that kind of concerns me in all of this is how it describes all of these involved as a criminal enterprise. Yeah, you know, is the is the DA at the end of the day trying to round up all these people and get them to turn on the president, or are they just hoping that many of them will maybe plead to a lesser charge? Um, I what I actually think this is all about is this is the shot across the bow to Republican politicians and their lawyers and their aides and their support supporters. If you dare question an election in the future, if you dare. Uh, raise any objection, we're going to come after you with, with the criminal justice system, with law enforcement, and we're going to make you pay one heck of a price if you do it. So don't even think about questioning elections going forward, even if Democrats steal elections, which, of course, Democrats would never steal an election because they're such upstanding people. Um, and, uh, you know, if you even question that now, you're going to face the full wrath of a prosecutor and in the government that that this just cannot happen in America. And this is why I keep saying these are republic ending tactics by Democrats to use lawfare to take out your political opponents, to put your political opponents in prison instead of uh, having them beat you at the election box. And th this is this is. We are going down a dangerous path. This is crossing the Rubicon. Remember why, why Caesar crossed the Rubicon from Gaul into Rome is because you had Caesar, who was a populist, and you had the Roman insiders who saw him as a threat. So the Roman insiders ran a lawfare campaign against him and made him so desperate he thought the only thing he could do was cross the Rubicon, and it led to a civil war and the end of the Roman Republic. And I'm not saying Trump and his supporters should even think about being violent here, but but my point is is that this is going to this is going to turn into a legal tit for tat, where the next time Trump is in office or another Republican is in office, they're going to use their Justice Department to go after their political enemies, and this is this is going to end our country as we know it. Let me let me put a clip up for you. This is House Speaker Kevin McCarthy yesterday on Fox News. Clip number three, please. Instead of protecting those in Atlanta, she puts out an email last Thursday saying, I have a big announcement from her campaign. They are campaigning off this instead of following what the Constitution says. They are do showing the American public that we have two different justice systems. All right, we've got about 30 seconds or so left, Mike. Uh, give me your reaction to that. Do you agree? I agree completely. And I would say to your colleagues in the House, you guys control the House. You have subpoena power. You have oversight power. You have impeachment power. And I think House Republicans should do a lot less tweeting and, uh, uh, and TV shows and a lot more work. And maybe we should come back from the high holy month of August recess and actually use that subpoena power and haul in people and get their records and Get them in front of the cameras and open an impeachment inquiry on President Biden and Attorney General Merrick Garland. Thank you so much, Mike Davis from Article 3 Project. We're grateful, very grateful for your insight this evening. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Congressman.